joining us live from Jody's Park in Nashville. Luis Miguel, welcome. It's good to have you on. Congrats on a great conversation with Lionel Messi the other day in Miami. Let me start by asking you this about the atmosphere. I always wondered if there ever was going to be a situation in which Messi was going to experience an away game when he played here in the United States of America. Tell us about the atmosphere in Nashville. What a great way to start, ma'am. I thought that Nashville represented the perfect host for this final. I was very impressed with the stadium before even a single person entered it, right? And I think that once that crowd got going, once the game got going, I really, for the first time, and I've been all over this country, seen many stadiums, I really felt that this was the most powerful example of what U.S. MLS domestic-based fan-based crowds can do. They were tremendous, pushing on Nashville SC all the way. Even when Lionel Messi scored that ridiculous goal. When have we, haven't we said that before, by the way? I thought that really they were fantastic. And they pushed on the team. So the atmosphere, man, by the way, was remarkable. One of the best. And obviously, not the ending that the home crowd wanted, but they should be very proud at the fact that they have cultivated something that obviously began even before they entered MLS. And to me, that's really, really special. It's a perfect ending. Lionel Andres Messi is an MLS, North America, but also we have now a community here in the U.S. that can really cultivate not just Messi, not just these stars, but overall all over the country. Luis, Luis Miguel, what's up, my man? I, you know, it looked on TV like the split was almost like 90-10, like 90% Nashville fans, maybe scattered 10% into Miami fans. Uh, if that's the correct perception, let me know. If not, please let us know the split there. But my question here is... There are moments in a game, regardless of who, who you cheer for, where you're watching greatness. Uh, somebody gets the ball, it's messy, you're up on your feet, the crowd hushes. How many of those moments did you experience uh, here at Jadis Park? Yeah, that's a good question. Let's go with that first part, by the way. I, you, you're close with 90-10, Herc. I think it was probably about 97-3. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Honestly, it was <laughs> intensely Nashville. But you're you're gonna get you're gonna get Messi and Argentina shirts all over. And there was obviously that crowd, the Inter Miami specifically by City Southern Legion, because Jorge Mas and the owners, you know, bought the tickets for those guys to come, which I think is a is a great commendable act from the owners in that perspective. But it was overwhelmingly. And, and it wasn't really anything that, you know, distracted Leo at any point. He kept doing his thing. And to the second part of your question, it was 50-50. At the beginning, it was more booing. Every time he touched the ball, it was booing. But, you know, it was the same thing with Philadelphia Union. Obviously, Philly fans are going to do a little bit more than booing. But today, every time he touched the ball, there was a little booing. And then when he scored that opening goal, that free kick, it was kind of an amazing experience because obviously Inter Miami up but everybody stood up because they knew that they would just witness greatness whether you were disappointed about the opening goal that's a different story but everybody stood up in that stadium so it was kind of a mixture of understanding that you're witnessing greatness but at the very same time just like Nashville SC was trying to do how do you quiet down greatness and for the most part collectively they really pushed them to the limits because they went to penalty shootouts but overall a great experience Definitely fan, messy fan bases all over, but really, Nashville, that crowd was ridiculous tonight. Luis Miguel, let me ask you something, because I remember when David Beckham was in Major League Soccer um, as a player, about the time we started seeing his popularity or that hype kind of fizzle out was about the time he lifted up that first trophy. Well, Messi just lifted up a trophy. Are we expecting the Messi hype to die down at all uh, very soon, or you think this is going to keep going? I, I don't think it's ever going to stop. It's just going <laughs> to grow. The snowball might slow down when it grows at some point, but it's still going to continue because this is just what he does. The thing is, whenever we have this conversation about Leo Messi and what he does in MLS in the space of about two months and the, you know, the ridiculous sort of popularity that he's generating with people that are not even into the game, we have to remember that he's been doing this since he was 19 years old just kept continue to grow and grow. It's just that now it's more special, I think, for a few reasons. We have to remember that he's in Miami, the Latin American capital city of the world. More than 70% are Latino or Afro-Latino that live in that city, and they celebrate this. 
and every single time he touches the ball or he enters the field, he does anything, it's going to be celebrated here. And by the way, here's another component, Herc. America loves underdogs. He is the ultimate underdog, a, a kid that needed growth hormones to even be a professional. And look where he is now, 44 trophies. No human being on this planet in the male's game has ever done that. So I think this messy effect, messy mania will just keep going and going and going. It depends how fast and how slow it goes, but it will definitely continue. Let me go off script a little bit here, uh, Luis Miguel, because Herc was referring to Messi's reaction during PKs. He right. was nervous. He just couldn't control himself. <laughs> uh, and, and, but but I think that's, that's a great sign. It means he cares. And I think that's been very, very palpable since he got there. He cares. He's committed. And let's be honest. When he was at PSG, I'm not going to say that he was not professional. He was a 100% a professional. But the attitude was different. Why? What's been the main difference here at Inter Miami so far? What a great question, man. I think it leads up to um, uh, cough, cough, my one-on-one -on -one with Leo Messi, where the first question was about that. I have never seen you happier, Leo, honestly. I've never seen you enjoy your game so much. And he said, you're correct. I had two horrible years. Obviously, he didn't refer to the club, but he was talking about PSG. And now that he's in Miami, his family is happy. And come on, boys, we know this. It's the simple truth. When your partner is happy, your family is happy, you're going to be happy as well. And that's exactly what's happening here. So because he's content of the pitch, he's able to now really focus on it. And make no mistake about it, he wants to win. And to your point about the penalties, it wasn't just that. But when Leo Campana could have won it in regular time and he missed, oh, my God, his face just dropped. Yeah, like, yeah. what are you doing? We could have done it right there. So that, that passion doesn't go away because at the end of the day, you know, yeah, Yes, he's a professional, but he's still that kid that just wants to win and win and win. And that, like you said, is nothing but good news, not just for Miami, not just for Messi, but for the overall state of competition. It was fantastic to see. Up next for Inter Miami is a chance for another trophy. Semifinals against Cincinnati in the Open Cup. But you've been following the team. What have you heard regarding the plan? Is it time to rest the stars? Is it time to give Messi, Busquets, and Jordi Alba a little time off? You know, that's a really good question because I think there's a, a few ways you can answer that. Number one, I thought tonight... I love the man. I've talked to him many times, but it was probably the worst performance I've seen Sergio Busquets play for Inter Miami. Does that come because of the fact that he's a little tired, perhaps? Jordi Alba wasn't given the same opportunities in terms of that wide side, so I'm not sure. But here's the other thing, right? Now that you have a trophy, obviously you want to keep winning. And by the way, if you don't know who Tata Martino is, this man doesn't care about, you know, oh, I'm going to think two weeks again. No, he wants to win every single game. So I do worry about that, but we have talked about that a lot. He's Leo Messi, but he's 36. And by the way, after the Cincinnati game, the U.S. Open Cup semifinal, there's also the start of the regular season for MLS once again, away at Red Bulls. And by the way, Argentina will be coming and calling for World Cup qualifiers in September. He's going to play your side of the woods in LAFC on September 3rd and then travel to Argentina, play at La Paz, and then he's going to come back to Atlanta United. So you have to balance all that fitness. You have to balance all that chemistry because it, it's not going to be, you know, a, a situation where longevity is going to take you. He's 36. I know he's Leo Messi, but he still needs to rest. So I'm intrigued to see what Tata thinks of against Cincinnati. I'm thinking because it's a semifinal, he's probably going to be like, no, nah, boys, screw it. We're, we're going all out here once again. I'm sorry. And I think the entire team will be like, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, they, they probably should do that. They got to win nine out of the next 12 games to secure that playoff spot. And let me ask you a question, Luis. Yeah. Luis Miguel, uh, <laughs> exactly. you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Tata Martino. Do you get the sense that this is kind of like a vindication tour for Tata Martino uh, and, and what he's doing here uh, with, with everything he's had? He's had to eat crow with the Mexican national team and the pundits down south. Do you think this is vindication for him? He feels that way? <laughs> what are you looking at me for? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I knew. I'm looking at you, too, I think. I think that's the part of it. Look, I mean, you can't forget what Tata Martino has done with Atlanta United, right? You can't forget that. He also created a cultural revolution when he won with that team. Miguel Almiron going to Newcastle, all that stuff. And then, obviously, the 
the things that he went through with the Mexican national team, don't worry, Mal, I'm not going to go too far into this one, but Appreciate him coming it. back to MLS, by the way, by the way, coming to a team that obviously had not won for like a month and a half until Leo Messi came, of course, a team that, as we're talking about, mathematically speaking, is really not going to make the playoffs anytime soon in the regular season. They, I mean, you know, it's not mathematically impossible, but it is very, very difficult. So him now winning League's Cup is a massive thing. But here's the major component for me. Yes, Leo Messi takes all the headlines. There is no doubt about it. Sergio Busquets, Jordi Alba, yes, new players came in, absolutely. But you need to create a culture in which all those players are happy and playing well. And throughout this entire tournament, Leo Messi has done his thing. But come on, guys, the entire chemistry of that 11 is fantastic. Benjamin Cremacci has been wonderful. I think Drake Allender should be really rivaling uh, Matt Turner for that starting sport in the USMNT. Mm. And that takes a lot of credit, not just for Leo or the teammates, but for Tata Martino. He's done a tremendous job creating a balance, a balance, because Miami can be a circus, both as a team and a city. And Tata came in and said, guys, we're going to do our thing. We're going to have an identity. We're going to have a focus. We're going to have a direction, and we're going to win. And all of them, including Leo Messi, said, let's go, Tata. Yeah, when Tata's happy and committed, he can do great things, no doubt. Did Luis, Mi Luis Miguel just say, Drake Calendar over Turner, yeah. he's, he's hitting up Broadway already before work. What's going on? Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, Luis Miguel, uh, great stuff, brother. Go get some rest. Go get some more colorful shirts because I feel you're going to be on the road for quite a while. Yeah. Excellent job, my man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank you, boys. Thank you. I'm going to get divorced now because all I do is follow Leo Messi. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.